um, hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about a very interesting natural phenomena. Can you identify it by looking at these images? I hope you got it right. Tsunami. So in this video, we will be able to learn natural hazards and natural disasters. Basically the difference. Classification of natural disasters. Now about tsunami. Um, what is tsunami? Uh, how it is caused, how it affects us, steps to mitigate destruction per, at personal and the government level. Let's understand the difference between natural hazards and natural disasters. In both the cases, there is a threat to life, health, environment and property. Natural hazards have potential to cause harm to people or property or sometimes both. Let's understand the segment over here. During a gas leak or an explosion, it can affect both property as well as humans. Um, on the other hand, natural disasters are larger in magnitude and the destruction and damage caused by them are very high. I mean, if there is a huge crack due to earthquake, it will not spare anyone. Natural hazards can be same and we can learn from it. Let's take an example of a gas leak. If there was a gas leak last year, we can control it by implementing a particular system or procedure to stop it so that it doesn't occur next time. On the other hand, no two disasters and sim are similar and comparable to each other. And speed planning may not work. Some of the type of hazards are physical, chemical and biological. In physical, an explosion can cause a huge amount of heat and noise that can lead to damages. In chemical hazard, they are due to basically due to leakages. And the third type is the biological. They are related to viruses um, like the outbreak of the coronavirus. Let's move on. But before that, let's understand the classification of disasters also. Uh, disasters are of two types, the natural and the man-made. Under natural, um, we have terrestrial. They are related to land, like earthquakes, landslides, soil erosion. Uh, aquatic, they are related to water or sea, like tsunami, floods, tidal waves, etc. Um, under atmospheric, they are basically related to atmosphere, air, like the thunderstorm, cyclone, drought, etc. The biological. Uh, they are in fact in insect diseases like the dengue or the malaria. The examples of man-made are industrial disasters, nuclear accidents, chemical accidents, fire, war, civil strike, structure failure and the pollution. Let's move on. But before that, let me ask you a question. Why is Philippines one of the hazardous country in the world? Any guesses? So one of the answer is 20 tropical cyclones a year. Now that's just an average. They experience daily earthquake, whether it is a major or the minor one. There are more than 20 active volcanoes and of course not to forget. They experience tsunami at least twice a year. Now let's move on to our main topic that is tsunami. Do you know um, it is a Japanese term? And in Japanese, it means harbor waves. A tsunami is a series of waves in water body caused by the displacement of a large volume of water, generally in an ocean or a large lake. It is basically generated by an impulsive disturbance that vertically displaces the water column. So now let's understand how it is caused. Earthquakes and volcanic eruptions or sometimes the landslides under the sea which causes the sea floor to move resulting in sudden displacement of ocean water upwards or in a vertical direction. Now let's talk about the features of the tsunami. Um, tsunami can appear as a falling or rising tidal wave. Tsunami can last for several hours. Uh, tsunami consists of several wave trains following each other. Um, it is called a wave train as it is not a single wave but consists of series of waves. A pattern of high water level is alternated with low water level. Once uh, in a tsunami, once there is the level of water is very high and alternatively changes to low water level. Now let's 
um, talk about the stages of the tsunami. The first stage is the initiation. A large set of ocean waves are caused in this stage. The second stage is the split stage. Waves split into two and the one travels into the deep ocean and the another travels towards the nearest coast. And the third stage, uh, the height of tsunami increases. Now in the fourth stage, a peak of tsunami hits the shore. It's the final stage. Now let's understand some important terms. It's a part of physics, but for a better understanding of tsunami, let's understand them first. Look at the image. Here you can see a series of waves over here. The height, highest point of the wave is known as the crest. I'll point towards the crest. This is the crest. And the lowest point is known as the trough. You can see, this is the trough. Now let's understand the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between the successive crest of the wave. See this crest. This is first crest, this is the second crest and the distance between them is called as the wavelength. Now let's see wave height. The vertical distance between the trough of the wave and the following crest. You can see that this is the wave height. The distance between the both the crest and the trough of the same wave so let's move on um, it's a fact that the impact of tsunami is less over oceans and more near the coast let's understand why in a deep ocean the height of tsunami waves is very less therefore a ship at the sea is not much affected by tsunami it is because uh, over deep water tsunami has very long wavelength and limited wave height. Thus a tsunami wave uh, raises a ship a meter or two. Uh, each rise and fall takes several minutes. Now let's see what happens when tsunami reaches the coast. When the tsunami, the waves appears the coast, the interaction of wave with the bottom increases which result in increasing wave height and decreasing wavelength. So they are known as shallow water waves because they have long wavelength. Next, move on. Look at the image. First one is from a deep ocean. Can you see a long wavelength and limited wave height? Here, yeah. the wavelength is very long and the wave height is very small. So now the next image is of a coast. See the interaction of a wave with the bottom is increasing thereby increasing wave height and decreasing wavelength. See the wave height is increasing from here to here and the wavelength is decreasing from here to here. The tsunami is frequently observed near the Pacific Ring of Fire. This is the Pacific Ocean, see? And this red portion is the Pacific Ring of Fire. Here the volcanoes, earthquakes are seen very frequently. Tsunami is frequently observed near these areas. Let us look at them separately. The first one is the Philippines. Then we have Indonesia. Then we have Japan. Then this Malaysia. Then this Myanmar. Then Sri Lanka. Then our own country that is India. We all have some misconceptions about the tsunami, so let's cl clarify them. A tsunami is a tidal wave. Actually, a tidal wave is a result of gravitational influence of moon, sun and planets. It is a seismic sea wave. Um, not actually. Seismic impulses are an earthquake related generation mechanism. But a tsunami can be caused by non-seismic events such as landslides, etc. It is a wind-generated wave. Um, the wind-generated disturbances are at sea surface, whereas the tsunami disturbs the whole uh, water in the sea. A tsunami is very destructive. It can affect us in many ways. It destroys buildings, bridges, trees everything. A tsunami is very violent. It results in instant death.
There are many after effects of tsunami as well. It can cause disease to spread in a tsunami hit area. It can affect the environment very severely. Last but not the least, reconstruction and clean up after tsunami is very huge cost problem. It can affect the economy. There are several warning signs for tsunami. If you experience any of these phenomena, don't wait for official evacuation orders. Immediately move to a higher ground. There are any kind of earthquake, receding of water from coast, abnormal ocean activities, preventive measures before tsunami. In our family, everyone should know what tsunami is. And in such a situation, how can we help? ourselves and others you should be knowing your own evacuation routes and they should be practiced properly and most important don't risk your life to save your belongings mitigation during a tsunami follow all the instructions by the local official stay away from damaged stuff in many uh, it may cause harm to you only Move to a higher place and stay until local officials tell you that it's safe. Mitigation after tsunami. Turn off all power lines for your own safety. Try to help the injured people around you in best possible way. Listen to local news or a NOAA weather radio. Stay out of damaged buildings. Let's move on to the major steps by the government for mitigation. The Disaster Management Act. Under this National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA was set up at the center level and the State Disaster Management Authority, SDMA, was set up at the state level. After a destructive tsunami in 2004, tsunami early warning system was set up in India. Houses near the sea were relocated. Mangrove and shelter belt plantation was done to reduce the impact of tsunami. Thank you everyone for watching my video. I hope this lecture is helpful for you.